Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the heavy-duty truck market exploded as Dodge began implementing the use of Cummins engines, and Ford continued to develop their IDI engines. By 1994, Dodge was redesigning their trucks and saw massive success, and by 1999, Ford had released their all-new Super Duty F-Series trucks. While Ford was enjoying massive success with their new platform and 7.3 Power Stroke engine that they had introduced earlier in the 1990s, GM was really hard at work trying to develop something that would absolutely blow the doors off of both Dodge and Ford in the coming years. Not only did GM develop the first direct competitor to Ford's new Super Duty line of trucks, but their new trucks also brought loads of new developments to the heavy duty truck market that we hadn't previously seen. With that in mind, let's take a deep dive into how GM changed their heavy duty trucks throughout the years to not only keep up with Ford and Dodge with their trucks, but in some instances dominate the market completely. Let's get into it. And to preface this video, I should mention that we're not gonna be talking about anything like a true heavy duty truck in the sense of a medium duty truck, something like the GMC General. We're only going to be looking at light duty, heavy duty trucks, which are gonna be these three quarter ton and one ton trucks. That being said, heavy duty GM trucks have been around for a very, very long time. And depending how far back you wanna go and how you want to define heavy duty, things get a little confusing. If you consider anything past a half ton truck as heavy duty, then the 1918 Chevrolet one ton is the starting point of it all. But for this video, we're going to start the story in 1973, when Chevy introduced the C30 one ton dually crew cab truck. At this time, this was the first ever crew cab dually truck, and realistically, it is the start of all modern heavy duty trucks. This is the start of it all. Not only was this new C30 crew cab dually an absolute unit with crazy capabilities that we had borderline never seen in any pickup truck before, it was also packaged in the loved square body design. Even crazier part, the MSRP for this model in 1973 was a whopping $4,388, which translates to just shy of $30,000 in today's dollars, which kind of puts into perspective the insane value that GM was offering with this truck. Unfortunately, this was well before diesel engines had become popularized in pickup trucks. So the C30 dually crew cab was stuck with the rather underwhelming 350 cubic inch V8 from Chevy off of the start, producing a whopping 155 horsepower and 255 pound feet of torque. Luckily, later down the line of the square body lineage, we saw more powerful engines introduced, such as the 454 big block. What's even more important to the story, to the history of GM's heavy duty trucks, is that in 1982, we saw the introduction of the 6.2 liter diesel. And while it's pretty hard to make a case for the 6.2 liter diesel being anything other than a turd or a boat anchor, it laid the groundwork for better diesel engines to be introduced later on. Jumping up to 1988, we saw the fourth generation of the C slash K trucks introduced, and this time around, it was on the new GMT 400 chassis. However, this platform did come in a few different forms. For example, the 1991 and onwards C3500 were on the GMT 455 chassis. The Suburban was either on the 410 or 425 chassis, and so on. This is also where we saw the introduction of a much better diesel engine the 6.5 liter diesel. This engine was introduced in 1992 and it was a massive improvement compared to the 6.2 liter. And the 6.5 was available in both naturally aspirated and turbocharged variants. But realistically, the entire life of the 6.5 liter diesel was simply just trying to keep up with what Ford and Dodge were doing with their diesel engines. With that in mind, the OBS generation of GM truck was pretty short lived from 1988 to 1998. As in 1999, the all new platform was introduced and it was miles ahead of anything GM had ever offered before with their trucks. With the new generation of GM trucks introduced in 1999, it brought with it an entirely new design that actually brought their trucks into the modern age and they didn't look like dinosaur trucks anymore. And the platform that it was all based on, the new GMT 800. For heavy duty trucks, this is a three piece frame system that features a hydroform front section, a roll formed or stamped midsection, and a stamped rear C channel section. The hydroform tubular crossmember and closeout plates help to provide improved torsional rigidity, which in turn helps the truck haul and tow much better and much safer. The only real unfortunate downside is that while Ford and Dodge continued to offer their heavy duty trucks with a solid front axle, the GMT 800 frame was designed around independent front suspension. Of course, it's worth noting that the GMT 800 was independent front suspension, just like the GMT 400. They're both independent front suspension, but it's really not something you love to see on a heavy duty truck 
because plain and simple, a solid front axle is simpler, it's better, it's stronger, it's overall much better for heavy duty applications. In the rear of the GMT 800, we saw the classic leaf spring suspension design and we had two engine options from 1999 to 2001. That's the 6 liter Vortec and the 8.1 liter Vortec. Where things get really interesting and really heat up in GM's history of their heavy duty trucks is in 2001 when we saw the introduction of the all new LB7 Duramax diesel engine. Now we've already covered the entire history of the Duramax engine in a separate video and I'll leave that link down in the description so you can check it out for yourself right below the like button. But as a quick refresher, this entire engine, the Duramax engine, was designed as a collaboration. It was produced as a collaboration between GM and Isuzu and it brought a ton of features that we had never seen in the pickup truck market. Some of these features include the new common rail injection system supplied by Bosch, aluminum cylinder heads rather than cast iron heads, and it was the first diesel engine in the segment to reach 300 horsepower. The LB7 engine had a relatively short life from 2001 to 2004, which was followed by the LLY Duramax and then the LBZ Duramax. But as I mentioned earlier, this new generation of GM trucks had a ton of things that we had never seen in this segment. As if the new Duramax diesel with class leading horsepower and torque at the time wasn't enough, GM then took it even further by putting an insanely tough, strong, and reliable transmission behind it, which is the Allison 1000. Part of what makes the new Allison 1000 series transmissions so special as compared to the Ford 4R100 or the Dodge 47RE from the same time frame is that the Allison transmission was a five speed rather than a four speed. It also featured state of the art electronics with adaptive learning and a tow haul mode that was way ahead of anything else anyone else was offering. And by 2006, the Allison 1000 transmission was upgraded even further with an extra gear. So it went from a five speed to a six speed and this happened to coincide with the introduction of the new LBZ Duramax engine. And while earlier I did mention my distaste for independent front suspension systems on heavy duty trucks, the AAM 9.25 system on the front of these heavy duty trucks wasn't half bad. The 9.25 in AAM 9.25 refers to the ring gear diameter in the differential. Outside the diff, the whole system is compromised of strong half shafts, weight saving control arms, and torsion bars to suspend the whole thing. Out back, we have the AAM 1150, which was first found in GM's trucks in 2001. This is a massive and borderline overkill rear axle with an 11.5 inch ring gear diameter, which was larger than any other three quarter ton axle at that time. Funny enough, this axle is actually so good, the AAM 1150, that Dodge actually ended up offering it in their trucks in 2003. While this generation of GM truck had its time under the sun and competed very well with Ford and Dodge trucks, often outdoing them in specific performance measurements, by 2007, 2008, it was time for them to introduce a new body style to keep up with the modern times. And GM introducing a new body style wasn't just for looks, it wasn't just for show. It's something that they had to do. Dodge updated their trucks and added common rail injection in 2003, and Ford revamped their Super Duty trucks in 2005 with coil spring suspension and improved towing capacity. Plain and simple, if GM wanted to stay on top, if they wanted to stay relevant, they needed a new body style. They needed a whole lot of new things, and that's exactly what they delivered. In terms of body styling, the 2007 trucks look almost nothing like the 2008 trucks, with much bigger headlights, a bigger grille, and entirely different stature. Of course, it's worth noting that the front end on these new 2008 heavy duty trucks were very much based on the half ton trucks that debuted their new body style in 2007. And yes, for the diehard GM fans out there, it was technically 2007 and a half, but that technicality isn't important at all. As per Chevy, the HD Silverado had been treated to, quote, bold, muscular designs that are differentiated from their light duty siblings, unquote. The treatments they're referring to include a wider and taller grille, large reflector optic headlamps, domed hoods, and flared front fenders intended to enhance the truck's wide stance. Realistically though, if you were to take a 2008 1500 Chevy and a 2008 2500 Chevy and put them side by side, the majority of people would not even be able to tell the difference. So yes, they are different and the styling was there, but a lot of it frankly was just kind of for marketing. But with the new body came an all new chassis, which was the GMT 900. And the exact same 9.25 AAM independent front suspension system was retained for this new chassis, but the frame was improved. More specifically, the midsection featured a lipped C-channel. Up front, the frame was hydroformed and the rear was C-channel. Really, this new GMT 900 chassis was more or less just an evolution of the GMT 800 chassis. In fact, they're really similar. The changes are actually fairly minor. Uh, but there's nothing really necessarily wrong with that, considering that the GMT 800 chassis was more than good enough for the application, so the GMT 900 just made a couple of minor changes. Under the new body and bolted to the new evolved chassis was the new and improved powertrain, and at the heart of it all was the new LMM Duramax. Upon initial launch in 2008, 
this new engine delivered 365 horsepower and 660 pound-feet of torque, which was best in class for the time. As compared to the outgoing LBZ Duramax, the LMM Duramax used revised injector nozzles, an EDC-16 Bosch ECM with new emissions-related internals, and revised cylinder head washer passages for enhanced cooling. On the gasoline side of things for the heavy-duty trucks, we saw the new 6-liter Vortec Max engine outputting 353 horsepower and 373 pound-feet of torque. The Allison transmission remained, and rightfully so. This time around, though, it offered an increased torque input capacity, which was simply required as a function of the LMM's increased power output. And whether or not you enjoy these types of systems, this was the first time we saw GM offer a factory integrated trailer brake controller in their heavy duty trucks. I know for a lot of people out there that tow a lot, they're not going to prefer a factory integrated brake controller. But the point is that in 2008, when they introduced that, they were trying to add features left and right to really improve their trucks. Lots of new features, the new and improved chassis, the new engine, all that stuff, they were really trying to dominate the market in 2008. The unfortunate downside with the new LMM Duramax was the addition of some new emissions components particularly the diesel particulate filter and a larger EGR cooler. We won't go into the cons of these emission systems on diesel engines in this video, as we've already done that with our Duramax guide video that I'll leave linked below the like button. Of course, you do have to remember that in 2008, when GM was making this big push, all these new features, the new Duramax engine, all this stuff, it wasn't a great time economically. And then later we saw a four month production pause in Duramax engines. Regardless though, the 2009 to 2011 trucks were quite successful, not as successful as the smaller 1500 trucks from the same time frame, but still well enough for GM to bring more innovations to the market in 2011. And with their new 2011 trucks, the idea was simple. Take back the lead from Ford and Dodge. They wanted to lead in towing capacity, max payload, chassis strength, sheer power output, and that's exactly what they did for a short time until Ford had reflashed the 6.7 power stroke up to 400 horsepower and 800 pound-feet of torque. On the outside though, you really would not be able to tell that there were any changes from the 2010 to 2011 trucks, as they are visually almost completely identical but underneath were massive changes to the chassis, the suspension, the engine, and more. The star of the show, as always with GM's heavy duty truck updates, was the new LML Duramax. With the previous LMM Duramax at 365 horsepower and 660 pound-feet of torque, it was a pretty decent engine in terms of power, but the LML took it way further with a huge jump to 397 horsepower and 765 pound-feet of torque. Part of this was thanks to the improved Bosch injection system, as well as a number of other factors. And not only did it output quite a bit more power, but it also output significantly less emissions. But of course, that's only a good thing on paper. The reality is that the decreased emissions output of the LML Duramax was basically just a function of more emission systems, namely the selective catalyst reduction with diesel exhaust fluid injection, and ultimately that meant a decrease in overall reliability. Behind the engine was the same Allison 1000 transmission with six gears, but it was slightly improved with a variable pressure main line to help reduce transmission fluid temperatures, which in turn improved towing and hauling capability. There's also the addition of a new torque converter and new low friction clutches inside the transmission for reduced powertrain loss. This is also when we saw exhaust braking added to their trucks, and this was simply added through the variable geometry turbocharger. And this works hand in hand with the tow haul mode to help decelerate the truck. Aside from the improved power output and slightly improved transmission, the big thing that helped GM's heavy duty trucks take a massive leap from 2011 onwards was the new fully boxed frame. This was a big improvement over the C-channel frame previously found on the GMT 900 heavy duty chassis, but it also added quite a bit of extra weight. Another area that we saw a big improvement in 2011 was the rear suspension, which now featured an asymmetrical leaf spring setup. Now this just simply moved the axle forwards away from the center line of the leaf spring in an attempt to reduce axle wrap. For those who don't know, that's simply when the axle has too much rotational force on it, namely through power and a heavy load, otherwise the tires would just spin, and the leaf spring will start to wrap. This is bad as it reduces the spring's ability to effectively handle the load, but also dangerous because the spring can violently unwrap and cause wheel hop in certain situations. There's other issues with axle wrap, but that's the gist of it. GM also upgraded the width of the leaf springs on the rear of these trucks from 2.5 inches to three inches, but ultimately this kind of meant a worse ride quality, but a little bit more rear end stability. On the front end, we also saw some changes, namely larger torsion bars were added, forged steel upper control arms were used, and cast iron lower control arms were used. We also saw larger knuckles. The improved rear suspension, improved front suspension, and fully boxed frame all led to a total weight increase of around 500 pounds between the 2010 and 2011 heavy duty trucks. On the gas side of things, pretty much nothing changed. We saw the six liter Vortec, which was kind of strange at the time considering that the 1500 truck, the small 
smaller truck could be optioned with the 6.2 liter Vortec. And while GM's trucks were visually the same up until 2019, 2020, in 2017, we did see a big update, another major update. At this time, Ford and Dodge were pushing to establish themselves as trucks that could pull 30,000 pounds. Meanwhile, GM decided not to pursue this insane towing figure in 2017, but rather to improve the overall towing experience and then later down the line in a few years, up the towing capacity to numbers that rival or surpass some medium duty trucks. The star of the show, yet again, was a new Duramax engine, another evolution of the 6.6 liter V8 engine. This time around, it was the L5P Duramax. This version features a new high pressure common rail injection system, new Borg Warner variable turbocharger, and much more all of which led to an at the time class leading 455 horsepower and 910 pound feet of torque. Behind this new L5P Duramax engine was the exact same Allison 1000 transmission, but that was soon to change as in 2020, GM introduced an all new 10 speed transmission design. The 10L1000 is said to have been fully built and designed by GM, but with careful oversight provided by Allison Transmission. So it's not exactly clear if this is a true Allison transmission or if GM simply kept the Allison name on it for improved marketability. Regardless of the naming convention, the new 2020 model 10 speed transmission has been proven as an excellent transmission across the board. Another interesting change made for the 2017 update was a new GMT K2XX platform, which was functionally very similar to the outgoing fully boxed GMT 900 platform. Atop this new chassis in 2017 was basically the same truck though. It had the same front end, the same back end, the same cab. It was visually identical to the previous 2016 trucks. But in 2019 slash 2020, we saw a huge update to all of their trucks across the board. And with their heavy duty trucks, we saw much taller headlights, a bigger grille, and overall much taller stature and just larger truck in general. As we mentioned a moment ago, the 2017 trucks kept the same towing rating at 23,200 pounds, which by itself is not bad at all. But in 2020, GM decided to crank it up a massive notch with the 3500 HD models coming in at an insane 35,500 pound towing rating. This was mainly from the addition of the new 10 speed transmission, as well as a larger rear end as compared to earlier trucks. One year later in 2021, the maximum towing rating was yet again increased, this time to 36,000 pounds, which at the time was a best in class figure. And while they technically were losing the diesel war on the torque output front, as they weren't really outputting as much as Dodge or Ford's trucks, where they were winning big was on the gas side, as in 2020, they introduced the new 6.6 liter LAT gas engine to finally replace the 6 liter Vortec. But that's kind of that. As I mentioned, we saw a visual update in 2019, but there hasn't been any major changes to GM's heavy duty trucks since then. Keep in mind, we're shooting this video at the tail end of 2022. So in 2023 or 2024, we could see an improved Duramax engine, a new chassis, a new rear axle, something along the lines to help improve their trucks even more. Presumably it's just going to be more power as Ford cranked up their power by quite a bit. If you think there's anything I forgot to mention or anything you want to add, be sure to drop it down in the comments below. Be sure to smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Check out some of the other stuff on the channel. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok if you use social media. And I'll see you guys in the next one.